So today we're going to be talking about better customer experience through employee engagement. But I missed one big thing in that title. I didn't talk about how do we get higher engaged employees that will ultimately yield better customer experiences. It's all through creating a strong learning culture. So how do we do that? So what are we going to talk about today? I'll give you the origins of the practice story because that is related to strong learning culture. Then I'm going to talk about engagement by the numbers. And then finally, I'm going to talk about one of our partners, Comcast, and how they've used practice and other tools to increase engagement, which ultimately leads to higher customer experience and other great business outcomes. So the practice origin story. I don't know about you, but I went through typical education um, and did quite well if you define well by the grades I got on a piece of paper. So I got mostly all A's and B's, but I never actually felt competent or confident as you would think those grades um, reflected. Why? Because I learned in sessions like this. Basically what I'm doing today, so I apologize in advance, which is just a talking at you model. And what I would do as a student is you would talk to me and I would mimic. But I would graduate from all my schools not really feeling like I learned anything and feeling more like an imposter. Until I went to law school. I went back to law school later in life. I was a teacher for five years through Teach for America and I was at the KIPP public charter schools. And then when I went back to law school, I had a teacher, his name was Carl Okamoto, and he was the best teacher I ever had. This is how he taught. He would do lessons in four week, four week chunks. He never lectured. What he would do, he would say, okay, week one, you're going to practice something. Week two, you're going to engage with your peers. Week three, you're going to self-reflect. And week four, you're going to get coaching. And this is how it would work. Well, actually, I'm more of a visual learner, so I'm going to show you how it works. We did this in a live setting in his class, but then we got a grant a couple years after I was practicing law. He called me and said, we got a grant from the government. Do you want to start a company to give more educators the power to teach how I taught in my class but could never scale? But now we can leverage the power of video and scale this for more educators to teach not like I'm doing, a talking head lecture, but more where learners are practicing. They're giving and getting feedback. They're self-reflecting and they're being coached to not only attain skills, but to retain them for the long term. So we did that, and we built a technology, which I'm going to show you how it works, and then I'm going to dive into how that and other things can really build a strong learning culture to increase engagement numbers. So I'm going to start off and tell you a little bit about the live session. So in the, in the law class, we would frequently practice. We'd be given a topic, like how to, how to do an asset purchase sale agreement. We'd have to practice it, build it, Actually, I'm going to pause there. I'm just going to show it to you how it works. So on the online, you'd come in. This is a Comcast One, a customer service call. And you would see the overview. What am I going to practice? This one is empathy in terms of the greeting on the call. And then you go to the next stage, which is the prompt and response. This is the frequent practice stage. And here, what happens is you'll get, you'll watch a video. And the video is showing you some sort of prompt. So in this one, it's Comcast saying, okay, you're going to practice the quality of a call. And here's the situation. You have to work on your greeting, assure them you'll help. And after that, you'll hear the situation, which is, okay, I'm a customer. I have a, tear, I have a problem with a bill. Okay. Before you actually take the calls at Comcast and the onboarding, you would practice. So you'd record yourself with your mobile phone or on the computer demonstrating how you would respond to that customer. Then you'd assess yourself. So uh, did I do the greeting well? Did I own the problem? Was I empathetic? Did I say the person's name? Whatever the sub-skills are that Comcast was looking for from all of their care agents, as they call them. After I submit my own self-assessment, I see how I do. If I didn't like it, which often happens on the first time, I try again. This stage was all designed to prompt frequent practice, because we know that's good for skill development. She's going to go forward. But typically, people practice about six times before they submit. The next stage is peer interactivity. So here, we designed this to, to create social learning, even though it's online. So everybody submitted. Videos get thrown in a, a virtual bucket, and you get assigned people. So I'm watching a peer. I'm giving her timestamp feedback, as you just saw. 
And then I'm going through the same assessment that I scored myself, and I'm scoring her. So not only am I learning from watching her, but when she gets the feedback, she's learning from me based on the rubric that my managers designed. I save that. I can do as many as I want. Typically, you have to do a required amount. Now I move on to the third learning stage. So we practice peer interactivity. Now we're on self-reflection. So how do we do that? So we show a model answer here. Model answer in typical education is shown in the beginning, and then you're supposed to mimic. But here we have you practice, engage with your peers, then see the model answer. That increases your engagement. You actually really want to see it because you're asked to self-reflect. What have I done well or what could I do differently now that I've seen the model? And it will help you iterate going forward. The fourth and final stage of this learning, we did the practice, peer interactivity, reflection, is now the coaching. So how does that happen? You get to this stage and you can see here my manager came in and gave me scores on each of these questions. My peers did, myself did, and you can see the, the um, comparison. Here you are going and seeing how your manager, manager gave you feedback. And then there's also fun things like a leaderboard that you can see at the bottom. That's how we captured this incredible learning experience that I had in law school where I practiced skills, I engaged with peers, I self-reflected, and I was coached. So I left, I left um, law school with high competency levels, but more importantly, very high confidence level. So we built practice to give um, companies and schools those tools to really create strong learning cultures that ultimately result in higher engagement numbers. So why? OK, so now we're going to talk about engagement by the numbers. I'm going to go through a few slides, and then I'll show you how this works in practice with Comcast. So, Engaged employees outperform disengaged employees. How do we know this? So Gallup did a research project a, a couple years ago. They first identified, they looked at millions of employees first, 1.9 million employees, and identified who's engaged and who's disengaged. Engaged def defined by they're passionate, they want to come to work, they um, work well together, they're innovative, et cetera. Disengaged is the opposite of that. They looked at the two groups, and then they looked at a number of business outcomes, one of which is customer engagement. And what they found was the engaged employees, unsurprisingly, outperformed the disengaged employees. Well, by how much? Engaged employees had 10% higher customer ratings, 17% higher productivity levels, 20% higher sales, 24% lower turnover rates, 41% lower absentee rates, 70% lower safety incidents, incidents, 58% lower patient safety incidents, and 40% lower quality defects. Much, much better business outcomes, including customer engagement, if you have highly engaged employees, which all stems from a, long, a strong learning culture. What else from the numbers? What have we learned here? If you, well, if you create strong learning, it impacts employee engagement. Every 10% increase in learning effectiveness increases employee engagement by 4%. What do you get with more engaged employees? You get all those business outcomes that I noted above. So it's worth investing in your people. Unsurprising that when Burson by Deloitte did their, every year they do their human capital trends report, and what they do is they research, they, they talk to 10,000 plus executives around the globe, 140 countries. And they ask them, what keeps you up at night? It's not the exact question, but basically that's what they ask them. And then they come up with, what are the top 10 things that these leaders are going to grapple with in the next year? The first thing was they, want, they are grappling with how to create the organization of the future. The second thing was, how do we create stronger learning cultures? Why? Because it improves engagement of employees, which ultimately improves business outcomes one of which is, is improving the customer experience. Why were those two things so big right now? I think it's by, because of some numbers that are pretty interesting to me. 65, 4.5, and 5. What do those mean? 65, it's not the age of that you're retiring, which is a, an answer I get often. 4.5. I usually get the answer right to this. And 565 
is the amount of time that people are working now. So imagine you, you start working at 20 your first job, you're now working till 85. Really it's just a reflection of we have longer lifespans. 4.5 is from B, the B, BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics. 4.5 is the average amount of time somebody spends in a job before they go to the next job. So no longer do we have 10 years at one, one job that's 20, 30 years. Five is the half-life of skills. I don't have a science mind or a math mind, so I needed to refresh what does half-life mean. Basically what that means is skills that you learned 10 years ago are irrelevant. Half of the skills that you learned five years ago are irrelevant. So collectively, what do these numbers mean? You have a, a, a workforce that's staying in jobs longer, but they're changing them quickly, and the skills that they previously learned just 10 years prior are irrelevant. You have to create a strong learning culture to, to help those people learn the new skills since we're in this unbelievably volatile world that is, is transforming faster than any other time period in our, in our history. What else is happening right now? People unlock their phones nine times an hour. My phone actually died today, not the battery, but died. I can't get it. It is uh, anxiety ridden and freeing at the same time. If I did have it, I'd probably be checking it right now while I'm talking to you. Most people watch videos no longer than four minutes. I'm actually probably closer to two minutes before I, my attention span is lost. Employees are interrupted every five minutes. I can definitely feel that pain. If attention isn't grabbed online within the first five to 10 seconds, then people click away. And two thirds of knowledge workers complain that they don't have time to do their job, unsurprising by the facts that we just heard before that. What does this bundle up to as it relates to, to creating a, a strong learning culture? 1% of a typical work week is all employees have to focus on training and development. 1%. So what does that mean in, in units that we understand? 24 minutes a week. Okay, but I started this talk with the fact that, so what this says, sorry, to back up, is that your employees are overwhelmed, distracted, and impatient. But I started this talk with, if you create engaged employees, you're going to have better business outcomes, in particular, better customer experiences. And all you have to do to get that is build a strong learning culture. How are you going to build a strong learning culture when your employees are overwhelmed, distracted, and impatient? On top of the fact that they have to constantly reskill up because of the numbers from the prior slide. So I'm going to take a minute and tell you what Comcast has done to um, create a strong learning culture to ensure employ engage employees that will ultimately result in better business outcomes. So Comcast looked at the learner of yesterday versus today, and they redesigned their training to meet the modern learner, which is one that is distracted and impatient. They used to have instructor-led trainings that were 32 days. This is specifically around their onboarding for their care project, which is customer service. It's how they define it. They would have 32 days. They'd bring everybody in live and train them. And then sometimes they would have them nest, so go and sit with the, and see on the job work. Now what they do is they created a self-directed experiential program, which is much more immersive, much more focused on um, the learner taking control of their own of their own destiny, for lack of a better way of saying it, and playing on multiple technologies, one of which is practice, to give them the knowledge at their fingertips, but also let them practice um, more micro-learning, so short bursts of learning throughout their development so that they are more engaged within the confines of an unbelievably distracted world. So what does this look like, this experiential self-directed approach that Comcast took? Well, they break it into three parts, which I think is, is quite helpful for understanding it. The first part, they, ha they, they set the knowledge base for their learners. So this is where you're going to learn the knowledge transfer. So for example, in that exercise I showed you in the beginning, it was all about the employee practicing the quality of a call. But before they can even practice, which is a second level, they have to learn what is in a high quality Comcast call. So they learn this 
in videos and instructor-led training, and they learn it from uh, interactive study guides on a tool called Inkling. After they've gotten all that knowledge, and they go to the second level, which is they see it in action and they practice it. I really like how Comcast does this. They do it in a few ways, one of which is through peer-assisted learning. So the new employee will go sit side by side with a, a, a employee who's been there for a little longer, and they'll watch them have a real quality call. And then they'll, they'll slowly go into practicing themselves, which I'll talk about in a minute. But this concept of PAL is, is quite powerful. Comcast told me the story. I'd also heard it from other folks. Um, the CLO of McDonald's, Rob Lauer, talked about how when he first started the job, he went out into the field. And when he listened to how his, his people learned, they didn't say, I learned it from an e-book or a webinar or an instructor-led training. They said, oh, I learned how to uh, flip a burger from Dave. I learned how to use the cash register from Joe, so on and so forth. And so what Rob tried to do is, how can I create more of those peer learning experiences to create that strong learning culture to increase engagement, ultimately yield better business results? Comcast did the same thing. They created a program, PAL, where you go sit with your peers. Comcast also uses practice for this. Practice is more on an online. You're not sitting next to a peer, but you're getting many more opportunities to practice something. So you're shown um, a, a, a scenario. How do you have that tough? Here's a, a, a person with a, with a customer problem with their bill. Upload a video demonstrating how you would help solve that issue. Then review yourself, then submit it for peers to review it, and that peer-to-peer -peer learning is the most powerful thing. Then you see a model answer, you self-reflect, and managers can come in and give you feedback. So Comcast does this often. They give many repetitions in the onboarding process so that when the employee is ready, the new employee is ready to go out on the field, they have practice, they've mastered it, and they feel much more confident. That's really going into the third, the third level there, that master and advance. How do you know you mastered it? Comcast has a program called Look at My Skills, where mentors can give feedback. They have report cards. Once they know those new employees have mastered something, then they can confidently put them out, know that they'll be um, well received by the customers, but also they've given that employee the tools to know that they can learn and they can grow and they develop and they've set that growth mindset in their employees so that engagement continues throughout their, throughout their career at Comcast, which ultimately will impact the business results. So let's actually, as we're talking about business results, look at some of them. So Comcast first, um, just last year, they revamped their program to create more of this experiential self-directed learning. Um, beforehand, it was much more traditional ILT, like I said, the, the 32 days in the classroom. And they looked at uh, a couple of cohorts that did the old, old way, first cohorts that did the new way. And then they compared and they saw the results. And the results specifically, I'll just focus on the small business, um, small medium business with the care new hires. They had a 9.6% increase in the first call resolution. So basically, did you solve the problem with the customer on the first call? And they had a 117% increase in the quality over the non-experiential program learners. So the, the learners who went through the um, historic way of onboarding. So it was pretty incredible results by really empowering the employees to take control of their own learning, to practice, to get feedback, to connect with their peers. Similar results in the sales, 17% increase in average revenue per sale, and 16% increase in revenue quota achievement. So it was a pretty exciting results um, from this new, new learning program. There's, still, there's lessons to be learned, there's iterations to be made, but at the heart of it, they have laid the foundation for a strong learning culture which is increased employee engagement, which has ultimately, as you can see from this slide, impacted the customer experience and other business outcomes to overall improve Comcast as a company. So in conclusion, learning cultures account for 46% of overall improved business outcomes, including innovation, time to market, and market share, and as we talked about today, the customer experience. So I'm excited to, to talk to all of you and hear about what you're doing to create that strong learning culture, and then excited to see how it increases your, your, the engagement of your employees and ultimately helps your business stay innovated and ahead of the curve in this extremely volatile 
but what I think is a quite exciting time for us. Thank you very much.